I told you folks I had the itch. That snow will be gone in no time and we'll be back in the forest. It's almost the end of March. It's always a good idea ahead of the season to get your equipment out and give it a once over. Find out what you're missing, anything you might need, whether it's new chains, wedges, those kind of things. You may find, as I did, that there's a lot of other people just like us. They're doing the same thing right now. Even just buying wedges, my dealer was out of them. He had only had one size left. And that's because he told me the same thing. Everybody's in there buying chains, wedges, different accessories, getting ready for the season. And although the supply chain issues over the last few years have kind of gotten a lot better, they're still not fixed. I thought maybe we could spend a few minutes together while I'm getting all this stuff done, catch up a little bit, talk a few things about the forest, firewood, and what we're up to this year, and a few of my own personal goals that I wanted to share with you that you might find interesting as well. So I hope you'll stick around. That chain is definitely nice and sharp. I can feel it and everything's nice and shiny right to the edges. So I definitely gave her a good sharpen before I put it away. I was pretty sure I'd cleaned up these saws and sharpened them before I put them away because usually Husky Bob and Guy and I get in, we get all the saws together at the end of the season and we kind of hang out, have a coffee and we clean them all up. This one I didn't use all winter so I'm pretty sure she's in good shape. Still nice and clean, so I know I touched it. And the bar's clean as well. There's nothing in the bar. And she's looking good. I can't remember if I cleaned this air filter or not, so we'll just give her a quick cleaning. Well, no, I didn't clean it. Don't forget, you're only supposed to use a maximum of 25 PSI to clean out this filter and you want to blow from inside out. I also want to make sure that the baffle on this carburetor has been put in the proper way. I don't plan on using this in the cold, so I'm just going to put it on the summer temperature or the summer setting, which means it's going in this way. My dealer told me you definitely don't want to leave this in the winter position when you're using it in the summer. And hey, this guy was pretty easy. Put her back together and we're good to go. You folks know I'm certainly no Sawyer or any expert. I'm kind of a weekend warrior just like you folks. But the more time I spend out in the forest, the more I love being out there. The more I learn and gain experience using this chainsaw the more I like it. And I've learned a lot over the years, quite a bit from you good folks. Many of you told me over the last couple of years that I should be using bore cuts or Humboldts or other different types of uh, methods of dropping my trees. And you're right, I should have, and I'm going to this year. It's not that I didn't want to learn those other things earlier. It's just I've always been kind of in a you know, the way I do things is I want to try to become reasonably proficient at one thing before I start trying to learn something else. And I think after the last few years, I've gotten pretty good at doing a conventional notch. I've learned a lot about falling trees. Um, I don't really branch out of that kind of square box that I've kept myself in. But I've got some goals for this year because I think that I've got enough experience doing a conventional that I want to try learning and getting experience doing a few other things. You'll recall this last year, I finally took some good advice from you folks and I decided to try to learn how to hand file. Up till that point, I'd always used a two-in-one or I got my neighbor guy to do my sharpening for me before that. And I'll tell you, it takes a little while to start to get the hang of it, but I'm getting reasonably proficient at it. And by the end of the season, I was certainly much better at it than I was when I first started. There's a lot to learn, and I'm still got a lot to learn. But using a hand file is a bit of a game changer. You learn a lot more about your saw when you're filing those cutters and those rakers by yourself, as opposed to just using the two-in-one. And I'm glad I started. In fact, as a safety last year, I decided that I'd 
hand file the 462, but I continued using a two and one on my 261, just in case. But now that I've gotten a little better at it, I decided this year to put away the two and one. I'll keep it in the tractor just in case I need a quick touch up out in the forest. But I'm gonna start hand filing that 261 as well this year. I think it just makes good sense. Plus, when you start to get the hang of getting that burr rolling off the end of the cutter, and you sink your bar into that first log, you know right away whether you did a good job or a mediocre job. So I'm gonna hand file everything this season. That's the first thing. And hey, if you are considering taking up hand filing, which I'd highly recommend you do, try watching Buck and Billy Ray Smith or Cotton Top or Guilty of Treason. Over the last recent while, all three of these guys has kind of changed the format of their video channels. Instead of just going into a forest falling a tree, they now take you into the forest and they explain how they're falling the tree, why they're doing a certain notch versus another, and they're taking more of an educational approach, which has been super helpful for me. And if you're specifically looking at filing, Buck and Billy Ray Smith has a ton of tutorials on how to file your chain properly. And for me, I also took a little bit of advice from you good folks. I found out that my still dealer does sell these files in 12 packs. Oddly enough, he doesn't have them out on his shelves. I had to go in and ask him, and he went into the back room and pulled them out for me. He told me that most folks will come in and buy one or two at a time, but I think the 12 pack is the way to go. I've got a set of files now for my 462, and I just picked up one for the 261. As a bit of a follow-up, I remember last year when I first started, I asked you folks how many filings or how many sharpenings you get out of each file. And interesting responses, anywhere from three to four to some folks who said they get about a dozen. Some folks said they change their files once a season. But the general consensus was about six to eight filings on that chain. And that's what I found by the end of the summer as well. I'd go through a file every six to eight sharpenings and I'd have to chuck it and get a new one. It's really important to have a nice sharp file or so I've learned. And this year I'm gonna get the upper hand on Husky Bob and Guy. <laughs> Although you have a lot of fun out in the forest with your buddies, you'll notice pretty quickly that your wedges start disappearing <laughs> and nobody knows who took them. So I went out and bought some of the larger ones because I had a few smaller ones, but somehow we still can't find some of my longer ones. I'll get them this year though, because this year, I put my name on them. <laughs> so I recognize this year, I'm gonna make a concerted effort when I'm falling trees or I'm working with logs on the ground that have compression on the top or tension, I'll know when to use them and I'll know and I'll have the right size wedges to use when I need them. The only problem is Guy and I have the same initials. But we'll know these are mine because I now have got proof. My first aid kit. Although you folks all told me I needed to do this, I was a little remiss. So many of you had told me that I need to get this tourniquet out of the plastic because in the time of an emergency, the last thing I'm probably going to have the dexterity to do is to try to pull the plastic off it. I have to say, I like this little compact trauma kit. Got it from Forest Safety Products down in the U.S. I like the way everything packs in tight. And you've got this instant pull string to pull everything out of the pouch. And although I hope I never need it, it's good to know it's going to be with me. And my 100 decibel whistle. Get that in there too. Great. Two other things that I've got for goals this summer is to learn how to do a Humboldt. As you know, or as we mentioned, I've always done a traditional or a conventional notch. So I'm going to take some time to practice and learn how to do a Humboldt and get reasonably proficient at that. The big thing for me though, is I also want to learn how to do a bore cut. I actually attempted it once a couple of summers ago. and It didn't go well. So I've watched a lot of videos uh, from those guys specifically on how to do bore cuts. I think I'm ready to try it again because I've got a little more experience under my belt. And there's definitely a need to do it sometimes, especially when you've got a heavy leaner. And I think it would be helpful if I spent some time this summer to try to learn how to do it and to become reasonably proficient with it. The Humboldt, of course, as you guys know, or a lot of you know, 
is kind of your go-to notch, I understand, from all the training videos I've watched from Workplace BC. I don't know why most people do a conventional, but for me, that's what Husky Bob and Guy taught me years ago. And that's pretty much all we've ever used here in the forest. But I'm going to spend some time and a concerted effort to try to build some skills with those two different types of cuts. Yeah. I was pretty sure I did. After that melee back in January where I had all those trees to cut up, I did take some time and cleaned up the old 261. So she's nice and clean. However, it's that time of year where I'm going to see if I can get Guy to take a look, pull this sprocket apart, and just check to make sure whether or not it needs some grease in there. And the second thing I'm going to do is, although the chain has a lot of life left in it, it's, it's not worn down too badly, but since I'm going to start hand filing it this year, I want to start off fresh. So I'm going to grab a fresh chain. That way, I'm not starting with a chain that I was using the 2-in-1 on but I can at least start with a fresh brand new chain as I go into the season. I'm also gonna leave my firewood pro sizer on this 261. I haven't decided if I'm gonna put the second one on my 462 yet or not, but I think for now, I'm gonna leave one saw with the firewood pro sizer and one without, and then we'll see how it goes through the summer. I may end up putting one on both because I love this unit. It comes in really handy when you just need to do some quick bucking or you've got a log pile full of bucking. Good, nice and clean. I almost forgot. I'm pretty sure this one's in the winter position. Yeah, it sure was. Okay. So there we go. So we'll so guy's on his way in to help me out. Interesting topic, which I know had a little bit of uh, discussion on the channel last year was whether or not or how often you're supposed to put grease in where this sprocket is and you look at the manual it does not require any maintenance at all or any greasing it just basically says that at the point in time that the sprocket wears out you remove it and replace it and you put grease in then however I know a lot of folks do it on a regular basis here we've always kind of done it once a year because I don't cut as much as a lot of other folks do and uh, given that I've got some expertise behind me, I figured I'd just call him out. Hey, guy, <laughs> didn't see you there. There it is. I remember going into those slots there and I pull it out. Gotcha. And it's spring steel. This is one we look for where. See, there's quite a bit of wear there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it wouldn't be hurt to pick up a couple of these because as this wears down, it's hard on your chain too. It right. wears your chain, so the chains are wearing out, and this is wearing out. Okay. So this is sacrificial. <laughs> okay. Now this one. There we go. Those are your fly weights and the springs. So as the RPM comes up, centrifugal force, these three pieces come out, they okay. grab the inside of this, yeah. and that starts the chain spinning. Okay. So we're going to clean up the inside of this, probably with some... <laughs> <laughs> we'll wash this out with some solvent. Okay, gotcha. Get that clean. And there's the roller bearing cage. So the needles are the actual bearings. So we'll probably flush this out with some cleaner too because it's contaminated a little bit and put fresh grease in that. Okay, great. And other than that, I think we're all right. Nice. Thank you, guy. WD-40. She's just good for anything. <laughs> We've got a little bit in there. And all I'm going to do is brush this in there, guy. Yeah. To clean it out. No oh, cheese. Yeah, there's a lot of black stuff in there. I think what I'll do is 
when I'm back in the city, I'll just drop by the chainsaw clinic and let them take a look at that sprocket. And if he thinks I need a new one, I'll just pop it on. Yeah, it's so easy to much. put on. There's one tiny little bearing. Let me know what you think. Because <laughs> I know it's your grease, so I know you're probably not being very generous. I'm very cheap. <laughs> Everything seats down so that groove is exposed. Right. Get it started in there. Now the fun begins. That's it. And that's it. Nice. So they're clean. It's lubricated in there. Nice. Well, that's probably the most interesting part of the whole video. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty fortunate for having that neighbor guy. He's awesome. I don't think there's anything he doesn't know. Of course, he'd never tell you, or you'd never know it from talking to him. All right. New chain to start the year off with the 261. That's a 25 inch. That is a 18 inch that should be the right chain and yep brand new this chain locker is the original so it's supposed to only be good for 20 inches but you can actually get your 25s or greater in you just fold them over at the end like i've done here and then they'll fit in there just fine. We're just about wrapped up for the day. I think that'll do it. Just a couple of last things. Oh, remember when you put your chainsaw away, you should always leave the chain loose. That way you don't put it away with tension on the sprocket. Or so the manual says. Good. Yep. Another thing I wanted to share with you good folks, you'll know that I got this brand new Protus helmet for this season. The folks at uh, Savoy Equipment out in Germany were really pleased that I did the video, so they sent me a couple of accessories. The first one is this neck guard for the back of the helmet. And it's, <laughs> it was kind of funny when it showed up in the mail because one of Carol's biggest complaints every summer is my neck is always so red. And in fact, I, uh, hmm. Red neck. Hmm. <laughs> I never pieced that together before. But either way, super happy to have it. They also sent me spare sweatbands. As I mentioned to you folks, this helmet is all modular and it's integrated. Everything snaps in and out and is replaceable. So the sweatband in the front of the helmet is no different. If the sweatband gets used or it starts to get full or it's, you know, it's wet, you just pop it out you stick another one in, and these can go in the washing machine. Anyways, big thanks to you, Allie, and all the good folks out there in Germany. Cheers. Oh, geez, the last thing on my agenda. A little embarrassing, but I had to tell you. I've had these chainsaw pants for a couple of years. I've never, ever washed them until this past weekend, and they washed up real nice, just in a regular load in the washer. Came out all shiny, all the stains came out, so they're ready for another season. So that's a wrap. Thanks so much for sticking around with me if you did. I hope you enjoyed the chat and I appreciate you hanging out in the workshop with me today.
Looking forward to this season. I think I'm in good shape. I'm ready. I've got some near-term goals and a few more skills that I want to try to hone or try to get experience doing. And I hope you guys will consider some of those things yourself. Have a great week with your family. Please be kind to each other. And I'll see you again right here. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching TP Outdoors. Cheers. <laughs>